welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers and today we are coming to you from Sherwin Lovell's guest house in Storbay Local Road. Now stay with us as we explore this property and tell you all that's been happening in Tobago over the past week. We start with this week's headlines. A Tobago Icons Museum is opened as the life works of two Tobago cultural icons go on display. Coach Bertil St. Clair is honored for his sterling contribution to the sporting sector of this country. Bonacord Government Primary School is on an academic drive to better help their students excel. And later, Wim Anglican Primary School celebrates 25 years. We've got these stories and much more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. Sherwin Lovell's guest house is a family-owned and operated apartment-styled accommodation. Having a long-standing interest in the business sector, the family was inspired to construct this property. Now they are not only operating a family-run business, but boosting the island's tourism industry. And you know, speaking of the tourism industry, history was created recently as the works, life, music, and achievements of two internationally acclaimed Tobago cultural icons were put on exhibit at a new refurbished building at Fort King George. Juliet James from the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation brings us the details. Appearing on stages across Trinidad and Tobago, the region and the world, these two Calypso veterans have entertained audiences for decades. Now visitors and fans of Linda McCarter, Sandy Lewis and the late Winston Bailey can now view their lifetime achievements through the medium of interactive theatre at the Tobago Icons Museum. The museum was recently commissioned by the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation in collaboration with the family of the late Winston Shadow Bailey and the Calypso Rose. The facility combines the use of technology and theatre techniques to give visitors a true appreciation of the talent, achievements, and musical journey of our cultural icons. In 2012, the Calypso Queen of the World gifted a bust of herself to the Tobago House of Assembly. Now, the busts, along with her other musical achievements are on display at the museum, an initiative she is pleased to see come to life. Now, Tobago, you are going to see the work that I have done and, and all the achievements that I have received universally. The museum also has memorabilia from the shadow, including one of his favorite musical instruments, his guitar. Shalon Bailey, son of the late musical icon, believes the museum is a fitting tribute to his father. It's nice to see that we, we, this come together because, I mean, one of the problems I've been watching with the country is archiving, putting things together, putting things in perspective and in place now for people who come behind, you know. At the ceremony, it was revealed that the Tobago Icons Museum will be adding new exhibits from other well-established artists from Tobago as they become available. We do not want it to be limited only to two persons. So long as another person willing to contribute their life work, the Tobago also Assembly is willing to accept it. Infusing a charismatic flavor, expressions of gratitude came from both the Queen of Calypso herself and the Shalom Bailey on behalf of his father and family. Are you getting last words? I said it's all right. The Lord was possible. So to Bebo, I am thankful to you. I will never be ungrateful as we thank. I thank my mother, my school teacher, my neighbor, my brother, my sister. So you see, Tobago, I thank you. The Tobago Icons Museum is located at Fort King George, and it is the latest addition to Tobago's tourism product. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I'm Julia James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. 
The Lavelle family grew up right here in Bonacourt, Tobago, and they're not ashamed to admit that they encountered financial struggles in their earlier years. However, with perseverance and determination, the doors of the Sherwin Lavelle guest house were opened for business in 2012. Now, there are few things that compare to being thanked, recognized, and honored whilst still being alive. And it was time to honor a living legend, the man, Bertil St. Clair, son of the soil, football extraordinaire, former Trinidad and Tobago national coach, and a man that is big on discipline. Here's more from Crystal George. Visionary, visionary, visionary. You can see the future in people. For that, I'm eternally grateful for what you've done for everyone. And again, these are small mementos of all the relationships that you've built over time. And we can't thank you enough, as everyone has said. But this is for you from all of our coaching school and Signal Hill. Thank you very much. There are a few things that compare to being thanked, recognized, and honored while still being alive. And it was time to honor living legend, the man Bertil Sinclair, son of the soil, Football extraordinaire, former Trinidad and Tobago national coach, and a man that is big on discipline. Noted for his saying, if you don't have any discipline, you can't go anywhere. Past students, friends, and family joined forces to honor coach Burton Sinclair for his stellar contribution to the game of football on the island and the nation. Celebrations took place over a three-day period and included the unveiling of a commemorative stone at the Signal Hill Secondary School Recreation Ground, a coaching school clinic at Sinclair Coaching School, an award ceremony at Shaw Park Complex, and a football extravaganza at the Mount Pleasant Recreation Ground. Filled with emotions and appreciation, Coach Sinclair extended thanks to everyone who made the celebration a great one. I want to thank them so much. What they have done and um, recognition of what I've done. So, my dear people, thank you and for coming up for the idea. I want to thank you so much. Coach Burton Sinclair is well acclaimed for helping to groom and nurture many Tobago football stars. And although the list is endless, Wendell Moore, Kian Daniel, Dominic McDougall, and Dwight York are only few of Bertil Sinclair's protégés who made it to an international level from Tobago. I've seen Coach as a mentor, a father figure, and beyond that, someone who I can pick the phone up even to this day and have a conversation. So it was my choice whether I decided to whether I wanted to do those press-ups or to, to make something of my life. And I decided to make something of my life because I believe in what Coach Bertus Sinclair had preached all these times in terms of having the vision, in terms of being disciplined and being focused to achieve your goals. At his side was his daughter Pia, who was bubbling with excitement and happy to know her father was being honored for his outstanding an unwavering contribution to sport on the island. The tremendous love that has been shown today is really emotional for me and it wasn't even about me. Um, he's a great man, he's done so much for Tobago and the world at large. I am extremely proud of him so I can only imagine for all those who he would have impacted. And it's a beautiful start and I hope that we continue to give gratitude where gratitude is due for all the legends that we have that are living and we don't wait until they are gone to then say thank you. So thanks Dan, you're so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Burton Sickley also celebrated his 82nd birthday over the weekend when he was honored, making the three-day celebration even sweeter. I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. Sitting on 7,000 square feet of land, this property comprises one one-bedroom apartment and two two-bedroom apartments. Now, each apartment features a balcony, fully equipped kitchen, dining area, Wi-Fi, and air-conditioned rooms for your absolute comforts. Now, we've been taught that one of the most basic human needs is shelter, and the National Commission for Self-Help Limited is assisting families and organizations with funding in an effort to fulfill this need. The most recent distribution saw families from all over Tobago receiving grants to aid with roofing needs and home improvement. Here's Omodara Mills with this story. 23 individuals and two NGOs are among the latest group of Tobagonians to receive grant assistance from the National Commission for Self-Help Limited. 
Larry Brassi of Castaro is one of them. He's relieved that he finally got financial assistance that will help him purchase building materials for repairs to his home. To be honest, I'm happy. Um, it was long overdue. It was over two years I've applied for this grant. I think I was deserving of it. It never came until the minister and Mr. David inter um, intervened. And uh, it was just about a month ago they actually did that. And today I have received the grant. So I am happy and I'm going to make use of that grant. Over $550,000 in grant funding was distributed to people from various communities for minor home repairs, emergency repairs due to natural disasters, and developmental projects. Chief Executive Officer for Self-Help, Elroy Julian, is happy that more families can live more securely. It gives me great joy to be able to continuously deliver on the Commission's mission, which is to improve and transform lives through our developmental programs. In doing so, I believe that our services will empower, will empower, empower worthy individuals like yourself to become more self-sufficient. Recipients received the grants in the form of purchase orders, which are redeemable at authorized hardware stores. Many of the recipients applauded the program's mission, which seeks to reduce poverty in communities. It's a very good initiative because not everybody has the resources readily available to them, and the self-help program assists a lot of members within the community in this regard. I find it very good, eh? and I find people who really need the help should really come in to get help so that they could do what they really have to do. You understand? And not to take it to do nonsense. Okay? So I thank very much. It was only two months ago that the Commission signed an MOU with the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment. The formal agreement means that families and NGOs who receive the Commission's construction grants can also get engineering and labor assistance from the Infrastructure Division. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. The Bonacord Government Primary School, in partnership with the community, are investing their time and energy into shaping well-rounded children for the future of Tobago. We tell you how after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Thank you for staying with us. We are at Sherwin Lovell's Guest House, a place that many describe as classy and entertaining and only a five minute commute from the airport. So you won't have to go far if you are coming to the island by the ANR Robinson International Airport. So we know that in today's society, a good academic foundation is critical for all children. Bearing this in mind, teachers and parents of the Bonacord Government Primary School are volunteering their time and skills after regular school hours in order to give students extra help in their academics. The after-school program recently began, and it's already showing early signs of success. Here's this story. Over the years, the Bonacord Government Primary School has established an outstanding reputation for its performance in many sporting disciplines. Now, parents, teachers and the volunteers are working together to ensure that the students are well-rounded, thereby balancing sporting success with academic progress. Under the Bonacord Excellence Program, selected pupils from first year to standard five are getting the help they need in reading, mathematics, homework, and SEA practice. One of the things we recognize is that sometimes we have children who are at the higher level, for example, standard one or standard two, who are not very well in reading. So we decided if it is we started to address the problem from infants, those who were falling behind, bring them up to speed now. And as new students come in, continue to work with them and bring them up to speed. By the time they're in standard one, standard two, they would be fluent readers. 
The after-school classes are held Mondays to Thursdays. The program was started in February of this year, and some parents have already reported improvements in their children's academic abilities. I have received feedback from parents who said that they're surprised that they're seeing improvements in the children thus far. So we were excited about that, and children are excited. You will see um, kids running up to me, Mason, excited if we have class later this afternoon. And we're excited, and we're looking forward to see what the program will achieve. The school is also collaborating with the NGO Empowerment Foundation of Tobago to carry out this program. Principal of the Bonacourt Government Primary School, Desma Frank, is in support of the pilot project and deems it as an instrument that will assist in improving the student's academic performance. If a child can read, a child can function in any subject area. And therefore, if we have all our children reading, we know that our children will improve and we are going to get better results in our examinations. At the end of this academic year, there will be an assessment of the Bonacord Excellence Program. It's hoped that this academic project will continue and help to grow well-rounded students who strive for their best always. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sherwin Lovell's guest house is no stranger to hosting events and parties. In fact, this was the location for Tobago's ultra-premium, all-inclusive carnival party that featured star-studded guest performances like Patrice Roberts and Farmer Nappy. We move now from Storbay to the village of Bethel, where the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development met with the residents to discuss their concerns about the health service delivery in that area. Here's this story. When your kidneys fail, dialysis keeps your body in balance by removing waste, salt and extra water to prevent them from building up in the body and causing harm. In Tobago, dialysis is a highly requested service and was one of the issues highlighted at the Division of Health wellness and family development's most recent community meeting in the village of Bethel. I know of, of a family who wanted dialysis, who one of the members of the family needed dialysis and they were torn, turned away, right? Said that there was, was no space. I want to know the criteria that is used to access that um, service. We face a situation where we have a number of species and more persons than species. We have tried to expand, and I'm going to get to the criteria a bit because even when you meet the criteria, there is no space except somebody dies. That's where we are now. And so, the problem that you, you, are, you, are, you are speaking to is real on this island. We visited as recent as last week. Not, not only that time, we have the numbers. We have very, very ill patients. We have tried, and in the case of your, the person you're speaking about, if it's a person who can be managed at home, the, there is an arrangement to allow for you to have your peritoneal dialysis done. The availability of doctors at the health center was another area of concern raised at the meeting. When you go to the, to the health center um, for a doctor, there's no doctor. And sometimes when you go, you have to make appointment to see the doctor. And I, I don't think I should make an appointment in a health center to see a doctor. The issue that you have outlined speaks to a kind of circuitous process which we shouldn't have in, circuit, in um, service delivery. So what you have described, I think we need to look further into it. As the public meeting progressed, one resident brought to the fore the services being offered at the health center. But if we have a walk-in problem, there are days when the doctors are present at Bethel, otherwise we have to go to Canaan or Bacolet. My question is, what could be done so that other persons who would have suffered the trauma that I did because my, mine came from a fall through the fire service floor and it kind of incapacitated me and I felt as though, well, somehow the service wasn't there. That is not the ideal situation, but what we've done though, even if it is you didn't have a service 
um, for those days. We have the extended hours, both in Canaan and Scarborough, um, up to 8 p.m. If, if you needed to do that. So that um, if you did come for a service and, um, or something happens in the day and the health center is closed or you didn't get that service, you can get the service right up to 8 p.m. The community health meeting is part of the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development's continued efforts to engage communities across Tobago and improve the service delivery of health care on the island. Wim Anglican Primary recently celebrated their 25th year of existence. After this break, we bring you the highlights of their celebrations. Stay with us. Let's Talk Tobago. We'll be right back. At Sherwin Lovell's guest house, you will always be treated like family and receive the reliable service that the owners take pride in giving. At present, you can receive a free night's stay when you spend more than five nights at this property. So take that vacation and visit beautiful Tobago. Now reaching the age of 25 is a great accomplishment. As they celebrate their silver anniversary, the Wim Anglican Primary School is ensuring that it is not only significant, but memorable. We have the details in this story. The Wim Anglican Primary School is celebrating 25 years of existence with a year of activities. The official theme, Back to the Roots. Our legends, our success. The first major event was the Walkathon where members of the community, staff, and children trekked from Backhill Junction Wim to the school's compound. With a past that has been great, I had no choice but to sail on the greatness and continue to fly the flag of Wim Anglican, a challenge that I have accepted. Dare I say that 25 years ago, the seas were certainly much calmer. The changes in education, the changes in how children are socialized, and of course our economic climate give rise to much needed skill, patience, innovation, and of course energy. 25 years later, we continue to weather the storm. We have expanded. We have been strengthened, and we are determined to excel. Our school motto says, perseverance wins, and we continue to persevere. The walkathon and official launch were followed by a career fair to help expose the students of Wim Anglican Primary School to the value and successes of entrepreneurship. Area Representative and the Chief Secretary Calvin Charles was also in attendance at the celebration and had a message for the teachers. I would really want to urge the teachers not to be wary in well-doing. Your task is a serious one. Because if you don't do your job as well as you can, then we all will reap <laughs> the unintended consequences. Next on the school's calendar of events is their Sports and Family Day. In keeping with the official theme of Back to the Roots, Our Legends, Our Success, the school will be honoring past principals by replacing the current names of the sports houses with the surnames of the past principals. In keeping with our theme of Back to the Roots, Our Legends, Our Success, the houses, the house names at our school have been changed from Exora, Shaconia and Hibiscus to Lewis, Brebna, and George to represent the names of three of our past principals, Mr. Velvet Lewis, Miss Ina Brebna, and Miss Marlene George. The year-long 25th anniversary celebrations will also include a year of teaching and exploring the heritage of the school. The celebrations will conclude with a grand concert at the end of 2019. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's now time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, the viewers. We'll have a look at who had their say this week. 
still want to ask you a What do you and it was A. Eh? He's only just telling things. That's a quick question. Nothing. No. Nothing. That's not hold on. I've written for the money for the question now. It's have your say time again now. A son of the soil was honored this weekend, and that son of the soil is none other than Mr. Bertil Sinclair. The question we're asking today is what else you think can be done to honor Mr. Bertil Sinclair? This is what you said. He's a great man, he's a respectable man. The need, they did something which I appreciate, but the need to do more. This was an effort from a small group of Tobagonians who benefited from him, but I'm saying that this is something that the state should get involved in. I would prefer to see something physically done to honor this icon in Tobago. They should have something in his name like some kind of, you know, to, to really recognize that the things he have done and the amount of footballers that he have, have contributed to this country. You see the street where he's living on? I feel I could call it Sinclair Drive. I think we could um, honor Mr. Bote Sinclair with a motorcade throughout the, um, the island. Whatever way the THA seems possible, maybe naming a stadium, a ground, something in his honor. He should be honored uh, just like the way uh, Calypso Rose and Calypso Shadow was honored because he's an icon. He has made great contributions to the youths over the years. And I really believe that we could be a great honorarium for him, or even the government could honor him in, in, in another way. Trinidad Tobago benefited from his efforts, and I'm saying that the state should get involved. Um, naming a park after him, um, getting sports to lift off a bit by using his name and you know giving him credit in some field. We are going to see someone else like him, and you know? please let us angle him in the right way. He's also my friend, I appreciate him. I consider him as a father, he's a respectable one in society. Please do the right thing on the man in the rightful way. It was A. He's only just telling things. That's a quick question, nothing else. That's not hold on. I've written for the money for the question now. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago. And as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, for more information on showing Lovell's guest house, you can contact 770-4102 or visit their Facebook page at Sherwin Lovell Guest House. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week. We close now with a montage of the primary school's track and field championships. Do enjoy. Mm -hmm.